got exposed. Am I too quick? How is that ice bath? It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not as bad as the cold. The actual cold tub. The cold tub is probably like 10 degrees colder. That's not for sure. So, Alex, I saw the, the the little bit you did on the Pac-12 Networks in regard to the addition to your family and naming uh, your boy Asa. Could you go a little bit more in depth on kind of the background with that? And, yeah, and the, so, the, the, it's, it's so funny because I didn't come up with the name Asa. My girlfriend did, and it's funny because my girlfriend has never met Asa, and she just had that name in her head once we found out it was a boy. So, you know, before we even knew if it was a boy or decide on the name. I knew that I wanted Asa to be the godfather and it all kind of just worked out that she wanted to name him Asa and I wanted Asa Turner to be the godfather and I think people were getting confused that I named him after Asa Turner. I was like nah it's, it's just a big coincidence. What was his response when you told when you told him the names? So well, I, I asked him for I asked him if well so I, I'll start start from the beginning. Uh, Asa was one of the first people I told that I was half a kid and he was so excited. He was, and I, I was, I was kind of keeping it under wraps. I just, the only person I told was Asa and my dad and my mom. And Asa's reaction was probably the greatest thing ever. He was so excited. He was like, "Man, I'll, I'll be there for the kid. Man, I, whatever you need, man. Baby, sit. I'll do whatever I have to do. To take stress off the plate." And you know, that really stuck with me uh, throughout the process of the pregnancy. And I'm like, man. Dude, is that passionate about somebody else's kid? Why not make him talk about it? Uh, when is the baby due? Uh, December 13th. How, how did that bond form? Obviously, he has both safety. He's been here for a couple years. He's a couple yeah. years younger than you. But did you know him prior to UW or is it something where you uh, Yeah, we, we built this relationship during our time at UW. And, um, you know, the 2020 season is our first season. Uh, as starters together, and um, you know that relationship. There's a different kind of relationship you have with you know people you are on the field with, not let alone practice. Like people you're on the field with during a game, you, it's like a natural bond you build. And you know, carrying in 2021 when we became starters again, that bond just kept growing and growing. And you know, I. So we all saw time. Like I see, Ace is like one of my blood brothers. So I mean, it was a no-brainer for me to make him the godfather of my kid. How special is that? I mean, there's a good chance that you guys are going to be starting next to each other, and now you know you know that he's going to be the godfather of your yeah. kid. And you guys are communicating and you're doing this together. How, how special is that for your last? Well, yeah, season? yeah. I think it's special because he knows that if something were to happen to me, that. You know, it would have an impact on my kid. So he's he's out there trying to protect me, and I and he's the godfather, and I don't want anything to happen to him. So I'm out there trying to protect him. So you know, while, while we're playing, we're thinking about these things, and you know that that relationship we have is just going you know, to translate so well into the football field. Me and two experienced guys, relative younger guys outside. How different is that dichotomy than maybe in previous years where everyone's yeah, like been in Yeah, I mean. You know, I came in with Elijah, Brandon McKinney, and Keith Taylor and all those guys. You know, I was playing receiver at the time, but when I switched over, they were still here. And, you know, seeing them go is kind of bittersweet. But, you know, seeing the new guys come in and step up and fill the big shoes that they left behind is special. And, you know, for me to lead them, they kind of look at me as a, as, a, as a leader. And, you know, I get to share my knowledge of what Elijah did and his preparation, what Brandon did, what Keith Taylor did, even with T. Rappers here, what he did, Miles Brown, those guys, and yeah, it's, it's just special. It's just special that I get to show those guys the blueprint and build those relationships with them, those guys. I was later. Tell me your name and number. Alex Cook, number five. What's your impression of Elijah Jackson? Put him towards him and talk to the team, make sure you're just getting his number yeah, yeah. Elijah, Elijah is one of the uprising stars. He's gonna, he's gonna continue that line of defensive back in the NFL, 100%. Elijah's the most athletic kid I've ever seen through this program. Easily, dude is blazing fast. You know, if you ever see him get, you will never probably see him get beat on a route because if he does get beat at the line of scrimmage, he's probably gonna make it up down the field. That's how fast he is. And a kid can jump like he he has like a 46 inch vertical it's like insane and his broad jump is number one on the team number one i've seen since i've been here and kid 
is smart. He wants it. He's driven. And if he just, you know, if he just stays at it, he's gonna be one of the next guys. I'm out of here. What are the biggest things in terms of the? You know, the schematics haven't really changed. Like, you guys are using a nickelback, but instead yeah. of that that smaller corner safety hybrid, it's the hybrid of the safety linebacker. Right. With Dominique and then uh, and their camp yeah. But have you, guys, have you guys really noticed the difference by the end of it? Is it, yeah. or is it still just terminology and just trying to absorb that? Right, yes. Yeah. You know, football's kind of universal in a sense where, you know, you get different coaches and it's all kind of the same a little bit. And that's kind of what, what it is here. But I would say the major difference is, you know, how aggressive the safeties are now. Uh, we're a lot closer quarters to the to the to the line, line of scrimmage, and yeah, we're just a lot aggressive, a lot more aggressive. We're making plays at the line of scrimmage as that, you know that wasn't the case previous years. But nickel, the nickel is pretty much the same. Nickel has to be pretty much the same, uh, just a lot more, a lot more aggression. And when it comes to that learning piece, and obviously with the portal, you're bringing new guys in, but guys that have had experience in other systems. Like you guys dealt with, with Jordan Perryman, and, and now and the linebackers have dealt with Cam Bright and now Chris Mole. What's the biggest thing? Do you guys have to to just show them leadership and just kind of help them along, or what's the biggest piece? Yeah, because really in the off season, the coaches are away on the road recruiting and all those kind of things, and you you have to invest your time as a as a veteran, as a guy who's, who's seen the defense during spring ball and, and in winter time uh, to show those guys the ropes. You know, teach them the nuances, teach them the terminology, all the all the techniques. And you know, once once they get here, it's, they're all overwhelmed and, and all that, all those kind of things. But you know, they pick it up eventually. Um, we do a lot of extra work, a lot of extra preparation, so we get those guys running on the ball. How big is the off-field piece compared to the on-field piece? Because Coach DeBoer mentioned a couple days ago, you guys were on the on the on a boat and we were kind of doing yeah. some of those things. You know, those kind of bonding things, how big is that, especially trying to integrate those new guys? Yeah, uh, like I said earlier, like with the relationship with me and Asa, you know, all the off stuff still, all, all the off stuff, off field stuff, yeah. <laughs> translates directly onto the field. You know, you build those relationships with the young guys, and they need that. They need to see, you know, how the team, how the team bonds. They, they just need to get a feel from the team outside of, outside of football, because, you know, you could put a hundred random people who's played football before on the football field. They, they'll know how to play. But once you step off the off the field, you know that's when people get uh, people are a little socially awkward. They don't know what to do and all those kind of things. And you know the stuff like the boat is really helpful for those guys just to get to open up, be themselves, um, see, see see what's going on with the older guys and the older guys. See what's going on with them. Are there some you know since you've been here a while, Alex, are there some things off the field that you like? That, that you've either grown to appreciate or you really think are great tools in helping that bonding? Yeah, I think we, so on Fridays, we do a appreciate, or appreciation Fridays where right, guys, we all show. stand up and, um, or we take one person from the offense or defense and we shout out whoever is doing really good on the opposite side. And, you know, sometimes, most of the time, it's the young guys that are getting shouted out because, you know, those are the ones who are making the big strides. It's, it's kind of hard for, you know, six year guys to improve like super significant, right. but you can see the young guys who don't know what the hell is going on to them <laughs> making making interceptions, scoring touchdowns. You know, for them, for an older guy to shout them out, it, it's really big. It's good for you know, the culture and the environment. Alex, you've been here for a couple different.